Have you ever noticed this? You drag an audio file onto the playlist in FL Studio and it plays normally like you'd expect. So if this audio file has a peak of 0 dBFS, then that's what you're gonna see in FL Studio too. DBFS or decibels relative to full scale just means it reaches that maximum amplitude that this digital waveform can go. If you go above it, you will clip. But if you drag the same audio file into a sampler and put down some notes, it's quieter. Now, if you notice the channel volume knob isn't actually at zero dB, if you hover over the knob, it says it's at minus 5.2 dB, and that's the default volume it's set to. All samples are turned down to give you some extra headroom, but if you raise this to zero decibels, it still isn't playing at zero decibel FS. So what's up with that? Maybe you think it has something to do with the velocity, and I thought the same thing. But if you put the velocity to 100%, it is actually now above zero dBFS and clipping. As long as this is the default value of 78%, then it shouldn't matter. What I learned is that if you hard pan the sound all the way to the left or the right, you then get the sound to reach zero decibel FS, like it should, like I initially expected. So what's going on here? Well, after a bit of research, I found an answer in FL Studio's very own manual. Behind the scenes, FL Studio is purposely turning down the volume by three decibels whenever the sound is panned to the center. Why? Why would you do this, FL? Well, the reason is actually quite smart. Under normal circumstances, when you have a sound that is not panned and just in the center, both the left and right channel are playing at the same volume. If you were to hard pan the audio to the left, now only one speaker is playing and the other isn't, which means the sound is going to be quieter. When it's back in the center, we would hear the volume from both speakers again. So it will, it will sound louder. If you are panning a sound from left to right, even though you're not touching the volume knob, it will feel like the volume is changing. So this is where the circular panning law comes into play as described in the FL Studio manual. You can see why it's called the circular panning law. Please tell me you can see why it's called circular. The goal of this is so that when you pan from left to right, it creates the illusion that it's staying around the same level and not getting quieter on either side. FL Studio uses a three decibel reduction in the center to balance this out. But I read those other volumes you can use too, like minus 4.5. In FL Studio, the alternative panning law is triangular, which is clearly demonstrated here with not a triangle, but just a straight line. Let's compare the two and see what you think. Also, if you look at this diagram, it implies it was triangular. The audio will not get this three decibel reduction in volume and therefore would be boosted back up. It would become louder. However, when you do switch it to triangular, that doesn't happen. It just keeps that minus three decibel reduction. And I found this FL Studio thread, which in kind of implies that some people thought the three decibel boost you got from turning it to triangular was actually making the sound quality better. So they decided to just keep it at minus three, even if you turned it off. Not all panning uses this effect in the same way. For instance, Ableton uses a constant panning law, which seems really similar. In practice, it also variates by three decibels but I don't know enough about it. And when I look at it, I'm just greeted with cosine fraction pi L theta squirt. I am just not in the headspace to deal with this right now. How useful is this information really though? Really though? If you've noticed this weird behavior before, now you know why it's happening. Then there's kind of like a cool reason behind it. Also, if you happen to be making an FL Studio to Ableton converter, it's very helpful to know why 0 dB in one sampler isn't equal to 0 dB in another. Coincidentally, I happen to be one of those people. Hey, where are you going? I wanted to talk to you about jukeblocks. 
my website that I built that not only generates song structure templates for multiple DAWs, and now including Bitwig, which I didn't really do, it's just Bitwig can now import Ableton files, but can also convert Ethel Studio to Ableton and vice versa. It also has a rearranger, which takes an eight bar idea of yours and rearranges it out into a full song arrangement. You can use it for free with limitations or subscribe and get more features. But back to the circular panning law, to anyone who just wants to produce and mix music, no, I don't think this is going to change anything for you. You should still be using your ears to determine how loud something should be in the mix and how much to pan it by. At the very least, it's just nice information to know, but really it, it shouldn't affect anything that you do. So really, you can just forget you watched this video. Regardless, I hope you still liked it, enjoyed it. I made it specially for you. Sorry for the lack of epic videos, but I, I still work a lot on Jukeblocks. That's it. That's, that's the end of the video. So uh, yeah, I will see you next time whenever that is.